Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bold and Beautiful podcast, where we are discussing all things bold and beautiful. I'm your host, Amanda, and I've decided to name this week's episode, Mum's the Word, because Taylor is begging everyone to keep her secret. And the main question this week is, can Brooke actually keep a secret? I don't know. If I was Taylor, I would be scared. And Pam is up to no good this week. She is definitely out to get Quinn. And she's going to use Donna to do it, or at least try. Okay, guys, let's get into the news. To be honest, there really wasn't much news this week. I did see an article with Jacob Young, who played... Rick Forrester and basically in the article he said that he had been talking to B&B and they were thinking about bringing Rick back I assume because Maya's coming back but there was no definite decision and he did say he would be open to coming back if they needed him So we might be getting Rick back, which would make me happy because he's a really good actor and I like the character Rick most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. And that's all the news. I do want to tell you guys really quick about one of my favorite podcasts, Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk. I absolutely love this podcast. It always makes me laugh. Grant goes on rants and they are hilarious so grant and a guest co-host share their opinions on the latest hollywood dish so it keeps me current on everything that's going on in the celebrity and hollywood world it's very funny and if you are into reality shows celebrity gossip Hollywood talk and news then you will love this show so make sure that you check it out again that's called Grant's Rants Hollywood Talk all right guys enough with the chit chat let's get to the recap Monday December the 3rd the show opens at Forrester Creations in the showroom with Brooke and Hope and Hope has just told Brooke about Taylor being the one who shot Bill Brooke is completely in shock. Hope explains that the four of them, Liam, Bill, Taylor, and Steffi, all kept the truth secret. And Brooke asked, well, why isn't she in jail? Hope explains that Steffi begged Bill to spare her mother, and he listened. Brooke is so upset by this, and she says, wow, his obsession got him shot. She also feels that Taylor is not only crazy, she's dangerous. And Brooke was pretty upset because she told Hope all these years, all the things that she says to me, how horrible I am, what a horrible person I am, all the stuff I've done. Taylor the saint, always calling me names and putting me down. Well, no more. And then she takes off. Brooke just takes off, and I'm sure it's to confront Taylor. And poor Hope tries to stop her, but there's no stopping Brooke. Now we head upstairs into the executive office with Steffi and Taylor. And Steffi is still upset that Liam told Hope their secret. Taylor thinks that Steffi is upset because because she went off on Liam. So Taylor says, you know what, I'm really sorry for talking to Liam that way. I shouldn't have done that. I apologize, but I am not going to apologize for how I feel. Whatever. Steffi says, look, Mom, you're right. Bill has done a lot of damage, but the worst thing is what he could do to you. Steffi then wants to know if Taylor is still in therapy, and she says she is. But that it's very hard because it's bringing up a lot of old emotions. And she is losing her mind worrying about going to jail. So Taylor tells Steffi that no one can tell if only the four of them know. 
If only the four of them know and they never say anything, then it'll all be all right. Uh Uh-oh. And Steffi decides not to say anything about Hope knowing. Now we head over to Spencer Publications in Bill's office with Bill and Liam. Liam has stopped by to talk to Bill about Taylor and the shooting. Bill informs Liam that Detective Sanchez paid him a visit earlier and the case is still open. But he will not turn Taylor in. He gave Steffi his word. Then Liam tells Bill that he told Hope the secret and he wanted him to know that Hope knows now. This concerns Bill because he says, you know, if too many people know, it's going to get out. Basically, Liam is worried that Taylor may snap on someone else. And he has a bad feeling about Taylor. And truly, he wishes she would just leave L.A. for good. And then Bill doesn't really agree. He thinks that Taylor, it was like a one-time thing. That she just lost it and and that she's harmless now. Then Bill asked why Liam came to him. And Liam admits that he misses talking to his dad and getting advice and the relationship that they had. But that maybe one day they can be even better than they were before. And then Bill very sweetly tells Liam that a father's love for his son can't be killed and that he will be there for Liam no matter what and no matter how. No matter what he needs, no matter how, he will be there for him. And I thought that was sweet. Now let's head back to Forrester in the executive office with Steffi and Hope. Taylor is gone. She has went home. Well, to Steffi's house. Steffi has called Hope to the office so she could talk to her about Taylor and the secret. Hope, being nice as always, asks Steffi if she's okay. And Steffi says, not, you know, I guess. (laughs) And Hope tells Steffi that she is concerned that Taylor is getting worse. And maybe they should go to the police because she needs help. And this really upsets Steffi. Because that's her mother, right? So, Steffi's like, no way, no way, we are not going to the police. And then Hope admits that she told Brooke the truth about everything. And this really upset Steffi. She's so upset that she's, like, speechless. But the look on her face was a mixture of, like, mad, scared, and panic all at one time. Now we head over to Steffi's house. Taylor told Amelia that she could leave and that she would watch the baby until Steffi gets home. And Liam is not going to like this because last week he told Steffi that he didn't want Taylor alone with Kelly. But I guess we'll have to see on that. Then guess who shows up at the door when Amelia is leaving? You guessed it, Brooke. So we're about to get another Brooke and Taylor confrontation. Taylor has the nerve to ask, Did you come to apologize, Brooke? Yeah, right. Then Brooke asks, Does Steffi know that you let the babysitter leave? And Taylor looks really puzzled. And she says, "Um, I'm her grandmother. I don't have to ask permission to watch her. And Brooke says, well, I just thought now that now that I know what you're capable of. And Taylor's like, what are you talking about? And she says, you know what? Why are you even here? You have Ridge. Hope has Liam. You both got what you want. Just leave me alone. You're the last person to judge me, Brooke. Then Brooke tells Taylor real quick that she has done a lot of things. That she is not proud of. But she's never walked into someone's house and picked up their gun and shot them in the back. And Taylor is horrified that Brooke knows. And that's how Monday ends. I'm really sorry if you hear my dogs barking in the background. They hate it when I am recording because I won't let them come in here. And they a lot of times love to protest. 
So that brings us in to Tuesday, December the 4th. The show opens at Steffi's house with Brooke and Taylor. And we're picking up right where we left off yesterday. And Taylor is freaking out. Brooke tries to calm her down. And then and then Taylor tries to act like she doesn't really know anything. Like she doesn't know what Brooke's talking about. And then Brooke grabs Taylor's purse off of the coffee table and she starts looking through it. And Taylor runs over and tries to yank the purse out of Brooke's hands. But Brooke will not let it go. So Brooke tells her that she's doing what anyone would do when there's a shooter in the house. And this really, really upsets Taylor. And she sits on the couch and she starts to break down. She starts to completely break down in front of Brooke, crying. And she tries to explain to Brooke that she can't believe that she did it either. It's like she just snapped and she is horrified at her behavior. But it's not her. And she keeps telling Brooke, it's not, that's not me. I would never do that again. It's not me. And Brooke should know that because she's known her her whole life. So Taylor explains everything to Brooke so that she can understand what happened. And then she breaks down crying again. Now we head over to Forrester Creations in the executive office with Steffi and Hope. And Steffi is so upset with Hope for telling her mom the truth about Taylor. And Hope assures Steffi that no one will go to the police and that her mother knows not to say anything. And then Steffi makes a good point. Hope, really? Has there ever been a secret that Brooke has kept? That's a good point. So Steffi wants Hope to know that this was a one-time thing. That her mother's not a criminal and that it's not going to happen again. But Hope is concerned that Taylor might snap. And hurt her mother. And that's why she had to tell her. Then Hope finally tells Steffi that Brooke went to confront Taylor. And Steffi is now she's really, really, really upset and really worried. And she tries to call Taylor, but she doesn't get an answer. And she tells Hope, how could you do this, Hope? You know how our mothers are. And in Hope's defense, there was no way for her to stop Brooke. No way. Meanwhile, out in the hallway at Pam's desk, Pam and Donna are fighting over the stapler, but it's a friendly fight, and they're laughing and joking. And Quinn walks up, and of course, she says, Why don't you two just staple yourselves together, since you're so inseparable now? And then she goes into the side office. And Pam, in her very Pammy way, tells Donna straight out that Donna is the princess and Quinn is the witch, trying to steal her true love. Now, Donna knows Pam's plan, and I think she feels a little uncomfortable with it. But, on the other hand, I think she does have some feelings for Eric still. So, I think she's conflicted about what she should do. In the side office with Quinn and Eric, Eric is waiting on one of his usual models for a fitting. And Quinn tells Eric, you know what? I am completely on to Pam's plan to use Donna for her honey bear skills. In other words, to steal you from me. Then Eric explains to Quinn That Pam always likes to think she has some kind of scheme going on. So don't take it personally. Eric always takes up for Pam. Which is understandable. I mean he loves her like a sister. So actually that makes sense that he would stick up for her. So Quinn says well I'm used to being despised. Don't worry. And then Eric assures her that he is happily married and that Donna knows that. Back out at Pam's desk, Pam gets a call from the model that Eric is waiting on. And she is stuck on the freeway with a flat tire, so she doesn't know if she's going to be able to make it. So Pam comes up with this brilliant plan to have Donna fill in and model for Eric. 
which Eric thinks is a great idea. So Pam Pam goes in and talks to him, and Eric thinks it's a great idea, and Pam is thrilled, of course, because Quinn will hate it. Now we head back to Steffi's with Brooke and Taylor, and Brooke feels sorry for Taylor because she's breaking down, so she gets her a glass of water, and she says, you know, we don't have to talk about this anymore. And Taylor says, oh, yes, we do. <laughs> now that you know, what are you going to do, Brooke? And Brooke asks, which I think is per I think is very reasonable to ask. She asks, do, does she or Hope need to worry? Is, is there any reason that she needs to worry for her daughter's safety? And Taylor assures Brooke that she does not have anything to worry about. She would never hurt anyone else. She only wants to be there for her granddaughter and her daughter. And then, very dramatically, Taylor starts crying and begging Brooke to keep her secret. She literally gets down on her hands and knees and, gra and like, grabs Brooke's feet or like like ankles and begs her and cries at her feet to keep the secret and Brooke is really taken aback and that's how Tuesday ends wow Taylor fell really hard off of that high horse she was on last week didn't she oh I forgot to tell you guys this week is only four episodes because they preempted Wednesday for the President Bush funeral. So we are skipping Wednesday and that will bring us straight into Thursday. December the 6th. The show opens at Steffi's house with Brooke and Taylor. And we're picking up right where we left off. And Taylor is begging Brooke to keep her secret. Taylor gets up off the floor and she gives Brooke her word that she will never hurt anyone else. So after thinking about it, Brooke finally tells Taylor that she will keep her secret and she will not turn her in for Steffi and Ridge. She's doing this for Steffi and Ridge because it would hurt both of them. If she went to the cops, they would get really hurt, and Brooke does not want to do that. But she does tell Taylor that she will be keeping an eye on her from now on. Now we head over to Forrester Creations in the executive office with Steffi and Ridge. Steffi has called Ridge in because she needs to talk to him, and he says, okay, obviously something's bothering you, what is it? So, Steffi tells Ridge the truth about what Taylor did. That Taylor is the one who shot Bill, and Ridge now knows everything, and he is in shock. Like, he's surprised. Maybe not as surprised as Brooke, but he's surprised. Now, we head over to Spencer Publications in Bill's office with Justin and Bill. Bill gives Justin a list of charities, and Justin realizes that they are all the same charities that Brooke supports. Really? Bill is so obvious. So Justin expresses that he still does not understand how Bill can just give up on the Spencer Tower. And he's not happy about it. So once again, Bill ex explains to Justin that he's evolving and changing and he wants to be different. And then there's a knock at the door, and guess who it is? It's Brooke, of course. And this makes Bill's day. Of course, he's so happy. I don't get it. I'm sorry. I don't dislike Bill. I don't love Bill. I don't hate him. But he was just in love with Steffi. Like, how do you... <laughs> He was just in love with her. Like, oh, I'll do anything for you. Head over hills. And now, what, like a couple months goes by? Three, two or three months. And now he's completely head over hills for Brooke. It's, it, I, I just don't know about Bill sometimes. 
And by the way, this is technically this is not Brooke's business, really. She should stay out of it, but it's Brooke and she won't. So Brooke explains to Bill that she truly believes that he has changed. And she tells him that she's proud of him and that she knows the truth. She knows it was Taylor who shot him. And she's very proud of him for keeping his word and doing the right things. Lately, anyway. So Brooke assures Bill that she will not go to the police and that she will keep the secret. But that she is very concerned for everyone's safety, especially Kelly's. Bill disagrees. He thinks Taylor's behavior was an isolated incident and that she would never, ever hurt Kelly. But Brooke persists and she says, look, I'm, re- I'm just worried about Kelly's well-being. And she tells Bill that he needs to do whatever he has to do to protect Kelly because Brooke does not trust Taylor and neither should he. Now we head back over to Forrester Creations in the side office with Donna and Eric. Donna is modeling for Eric and outside in the hallway at Pam's desk, Pam is desperately trying to distract Quinn and keep her away from Donna and Eric. Meanwhile, back in the office, Donna and Eric are enjoying each other's company and they are, they're being really friendly. I guess you could say a little bit flirty, but it's completely harmless. Just friends, you know, it's completely harmless. Back in the hallway, Quinn finally gets past Pam and she walks into the side office and she is not happy with what she sees, not one bit. And she asks, uh, what is going on here, Eric? Quinn is absolutely not happy about Donna being Eric's model. Honestly, I don't blame her. If if I walked in on my husband and his ex, there would be a problem. I promise you that there would be a problem. Now we head back over to Steffi's house. Steffi and Ridge have just arrived and they are looking for Taylor. And Taylor comes out of the bedroom and as soon as she sees their faces, she knows that Steffi told Ridge and she is not very happy about it. Taylor tells them what happened earlier with Brooke and how she said she would keep the secret and not go to the police. And of course, Taylor feels like Brooke is up to something. And that comment makes Ridge mad. And he says, look, Brooke is not up to anything. She is not heartless. And she is all about family. And then Taylor gets all upset again. And she begs Ridge to help her with Brooke. To help her keep Brooke quiet. And then Ridge calms Taylor down. And he tells her, look. Do not worry. I won't let anything happen to you or Steffi or Kelly. And he assures her that it's all going to be all right. And that's how Thursday ends. I'll tell you one thing. This secret is not going to be a secret much longer. I mean, it is just one person after another finding out and like Bill said that's probably not a good thing if you want to keep something quiet so that brings us in to Friday December the 7th the show opens at Brooke and Ridge's house in their bedroom and Ridge notices that Brooke is being really quiet so he wants to know what's up and Brooke tells him that she wishes they would have seen this coming But Ridge disagrees. He says, how on earth would we have known Taylor would shoot Bill? And Brooke just tells him, you know what? Taylor's not only wacky and eccentric, but she's also dangerous. So, of course, this starts an argument. Ridge doesn't blame Taylor. Because given the circumstances, he would have done the same thing. 
he doesn't agree with Brooke at all. He does not really think that Taylor is dangerous. I hope that he's right. And I really hope that this whole Taylor bill thing does not come between Brooke and Ridge because I actually think it's interesting to see a relationship on the show that really means something and that goes through hard times and good times just like in real life but on the soap opera they tend to constantly get together and break up get together and break up and no one's ever together for very long so I, I love this, what we have going with Brooke and Ridge. I know some people feel like they don't have chemistry, but I totally disagree with that. I think they do. I think they do have good chemistry. All right, now we head over to Steffi's house with Taylor and Steffi. Steffi is having a few people over who have worked on her line with her, who she wants to just uh, show her appreciation to. And she tells Taylor that she wants her to stay and hang out. As long as the alcohol won't bother her. And Taylor says, no, that's not a problem. So, before everyone gets there, Steffi tells Taylor that she thinks Brooke was being ridiculous, implying that she shouldn't be around Kelly. And not to worry that she does not feel that way. And that everything will be fine. Taylor is... Helping with Kelly so that Steffi can enjoy the can enjoy her party. Taylor puts Kelly to bed and then she comes out and the guests start to arrive. Wyatt and Sally, Zoe and Xander, and Xander's father, Dr. Reese, Buckingham. And Steffi introduces Reese to Taylor and they seem to hit it off immediately quite well. Across the room, it looks like Zoe and Xander are definitely back together. They are all, like, cuddled up and snuggled up to each other. And um, Zoe asks Xander, is this okay? And he says, absolutely. And so I take it, no more Emma? I don't know. I haven't seen any news about Emma. Back across the room, much to Steffi's embarrassment and objections, Taylor decides to tell Reese all about how Liam should be with Steffi. And then she goes into her whole usual song and dance that she does, which I absolutely refuse to write down anymore. Okay, everyone knows it. She Every time she's on screen, she says it. And I refuse to write that down anymore. In my opinion, Taylor is being a horrible mother. Steffi is obviously uncomfortable. And she's telling her to please stop talking about that. And it makes me sad because this is not the Taylor that I know and love. And poor Steffi. I mean, what are you going to do? She won't listen to a word she says. And it's not only making Steffi uncomfortable, but it's making Wyatt and Sally uncomfortable. It, it's, it's inappropriate at her party. But Reese assures Taylor that he totally understands wanting to protect your child. So everyone's mingling at the party and enjoying themselves and talking. And a little later, we find out that the two doctors, Taylor and Reese, actually have met before a long time ago at a conference. And they are getting along very well. I'm thinking they're going to be an item. Then Steffi gives a toast to all of the people who helped her line be a success. And she also thanks Taylor for being a great mother to her. Then Reese walks over and he tells Taylor, I know that we just met, but if you ever need to talk, I'm here. And everyone is drinking and having fun and they're all mingling, except Taylor, of course. And as the night goes on, Taylor and Reese keep getting very closer they keep getting closer and closer and closer and Taylor she just starts telling him everything she's telling him about her alcohol problems and she gave him an earful an ear full about Brooke and how horrible she is and how horrible Hope is I mean who tells a stranger you just met like an hour ago all of their business like who does that who tells a st complete stranger all of your secrets and business 
Like, I found that weird. That's kind of weird to me. But to each their own, to be honest, to each their own. Now we head back to Brooke's house. And Ridge and Brooke are arguing over Taylor and the situation. So Brooke just shakes her head and she tells Ridge, look, I know you. I know you better than you know yourself. You would never pick up a gun and shoot someone. Even though you do absolutely detest Bill, you would never go to his house, pick up his gun, and shoot him. In the back, no less. So, Ridge wants to know, okay, what exactly are you trying to say? So, Brooke explains to Ridge that she does not think Taylor should be left alone with Kelly. She doesn't think it's safe. And Ridge totally disagrees. He thinks Taylor is harmless. She would never hurt Kelly. And then Ridge and Brooke realize that they're not going to agree on this. Because Brooke feels Taylor is dangerous and Ridge does not. And they're at this place where neither one wants to fight. But they can't agree either. So then they just decide to agree to disagree. They love each other and they both agree that they do not want Taylor coming between them. So they decide the best thing to do is just agree to get, agree to disagree and drop it. They hug and kiss and make up and that is how Friday ends. So here's what we have. A connection, a possible love connection between Taylor and Reese. Brooke and Ridge are not going to let Taylor come between them. At least I hope not. But I'm more worried about Bill than Taylor coming between them. And we have a Quinn cliffhanger. Quinn walking in on Eric and Donna. I'm not sure what her reaction is going to be, but I can tell you she looked very mad. She did not look happy. She looked mad. So I can't wait until Monday to see Quinn's reaction to Donna being Eric's model. That will be very interesting. I can tell you right now, me and my husband would have a problem. Okay? If uh, you don't have a model and the only person in the whole world that's available is your ex, then you don't do the fitting that day. Okay, sir? That's my opinion. So, on this, I totally see why Quinn is mad. What I'm most curious about is will she bring out the crazy and get really jealous because that's exactly what Pam wants her to do? Or will she contain her emotions and be very civil about it even though she's mad? Because she knows that Pam wants her to lose it. So I'm not sure, but I can't wait to see what she does. So that brings us to the end of the episode. I would love to know what you guys think about what's going on. I especially want to know what everyone thinks about Taylor and her secrets. And is she dangerous? Is she not dangerous? I would love to hear from you guys. So... Get in touch with me at the bold and beautiful podcast.com. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I hope you guys have an awesome week. I know everybody's busy and everything's crazy because of Christmas. So be safe and I will be back in your ears next week. Until then, bye guys.